welcome back to Laravel Podcast Season 5. As always, I'm your host, Matt Stauffer, and this is the season where we're talking about a package for every single one. And you know, if we're talking about packages in the Laravel ecosystem, we're going to talk to Freik. So this th- joining me today is Freik von der Herzen, the mm-hmm. co-founder and big guy around town. It's Spotsy, who you've heard of before. Of course, you do Laravel stuff. So Freik, would you say hi to the people? And can you tell us a little bit about Laravel Backup that we're going to be talking about today? Yes, hello. I'm I'm glad to be on. Uh, yeah, you you've thrown a lot of titles at me. Normally, I introduce myself <laughs> as just a regular developer uh, regular at a Belgian company. Uh, I'm a Belgian modest guy, uh, mm-hmm. a little bit, but I'm happy about uh, yeah talking about the the packages on uh, on this podcast. Awesome. So, yeah, well, we today... all know that's yeah. We all know Spazzy's made a lot of packages and so what i did was i i lined them up and i sorry i should have thrown it not thrown this to you yet i lined them up in order of most downloads basically and so it turns out that laravel backup according to the i don't know if i used to look at packages or what but laravel backup has the most downloads volume does that line up with your numbers i know you guys keep no, track of this kind of stuff I... Uh, I'm, I'm not keeping on, on my eye on it from day to day, but I think there are a couple that, that are downloaded even thought. more. I don't, yeah. I don't even know why I got this one at the top of the list. Either way, it's definitely popular. I wouldn't have made it on this list at all. So let's talk about yeah. Laravel Backup. Can you give us the elevator pitch of this package? What is the main thing that it's solving? Yeah, I think it's it's named pretty well. So uh, this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, clear. this yeah, this package can make a backup of your application. So uh, if your uh, server just burns down, or maybe you accidentally uh, just wipe out the S3 or your Vapor application then this package can yeah just save you uh from uh, from tears and worse uh, <laughs> i should say uh yeah so, so when what, you what say the... backup we can talk about a couple different things though what are we actually backing up with this package yeah you you can basically choose what what should be backed up so there are two main sort of things it can back up it can back up uh files from the file system and you can decide what uh, gets uh, gets backed up and you can back up your your database because yeah that's kind of important of your application as well and how it does that basically it uh, it just dumps the the database onto the file system so it's just a regular file Another it puts file, that yeah. together with the other files in a zip file and it copies that to a uh, external storage that you can can configure uh, yourself yeah. as well so I'm I'm sitting here and I'm going, I'm a modern programmer. I use Git. Why would I need to back up my files? Can you give me an example of some files I might yeah. actually want to back up? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question because yeah, people have, have asked me that before. Uh, source code doesn't need to be backed up because it's in right. version control. But right. on your server, there are a lot of other things that, that aren't backed, uh, backed up. Take, for instance, maybe some media files that your users mm-hmm. have, uh, have uploaded. Or maybe the environment file where every key that your application uses uh, is listed in. I think if you imagine if your server would be gone, it might take you a while to just get all those values back. So it makes sense to have a, a, a backup of that file uh, as well. Um, yeah, and the database, of course, because that's something that uh, in most cases isn't in uh, in version control at all. So yeah. you you still you really uh, still need backups, um, and I think even when you use something uh, like Vapor, where probably you use something like S3 or something mm-hmm. uh, for your user generated content, it can't be a bad. If, if it's not too much data to have a backup of that as well, uh, because mm-hmm. yeah, maybe by accident, you're, you're deleting your S3 storage, or right. maybe one of uh, your users just deletes their account. You, uh, uh, delete all the files, but afterwards the, the customer wants to come back and then you really want to have a backup. So there right. are lots of scenarios where, where you're going to need this. Yeah. So um, normally I would not ask this question until later, but I know that there's a few people listening that are going, back up my environment variables. What on earth are you talking about? Security concern. Er, 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 er. Can mm-hmm. you dip tiny little bit into, tell me about the security of the zip file. 
am I worried about the contents of the zip file? Let's see, say users upload their personal pictures in there. Let's say we've got environment keys that are super protected. What does security look like when it comes to these backups? And then we can go into the normal, but I felt like there's going to be a lot of people who, until we answer that question, aren't going to be able to listen to a single other word. Yeah. So um, that's something that's, it's, it's really an important question. And there are two ways uh, for security. One is that uh, the back package can also encrypt the, the backups itself. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, a feature that's baked up in the, uh, uh, baked in the, in the package itself. But what you can also do is where you're uh, copying your backup to, you can uh, add some extra security uh, there as well. I know that at Amazon, at S3, you can uh, uh, configure your bucket in such a way that nothing can come come out of it. That is just uh, just dropping stuff in there, and nothing can can be read yeah. there. Uh, you can configure it that it all the contents on there should be encrypted as well. And mm -hmm. basically, you can use the the features of the backup destination to. Um, yeah, to make sure that your your backups are secure as well. Yeah. But everything falls uh, or stands or falls with yeah keeping your credentials to the backup destination secure as well. That's uh, yeah. uh, that's a very good idea to do. Now I'm not a security expert, but what security experts always tell me is that it's it's not necessarily a bad thing to keep your backups of everything in one place so that you have like one thing to secure very well, mm. uh, as opposed <laughs> to have like tens uh, uh, or, or hundreds yeah. of different backup destinations. Just pick one and just, yeah, secure it very, Do very fantastic well. Fantastic job. Yeah. That's really helpful to hear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. AWS S3, for anybody who's not familiar, that's Amazon's file storage system. The permissions can be really confusing there. However, the default permissions these days, which didn't used to be the case, are nobody can read anything at all, which just like Frank just mentioned is wonderful because if nobody can read it, the only thing you could do is write stuff in it and you're actually going to have to modify the settings at all to ever even get something out of it. So that might make it a little bit difficult to get something out maybe your first time, but the benefit of that is by default, nothing can be touched by anyone, or at least nothing from a public. I can't remember the specifics, but regardless, the native yeah. kind of like S3 permissions are like super, super, super locked down. So even with somebody who doesn't have a ton of knowledge, you're not going to get in the circumstance where you're like, oops, I accidentally backed it up to a public URL or something like that. Like literally you can't do that unless you're pressing the wrong buttons, you know? So yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, indeed. And I would really recommend that if you use S3 to store your backups, uh, create a dedicated bucket for that. Don't yes. mix it with any other data or something. Just uh, do something separately, make it as secure as, as possible. Uh, that's, that's a good thing to do. Now we're talking about S3 the whole time, but the backup package can actually yeah, back up to any um, destination that you want. We leverage, uh, Laravel's, um, um, the file, system. Um, file system for that, like mm -hmm. cloud file system. I don't know how yeah, it's, whatever it's called. Marketed yeah. the, the, yeah. these, uh, these days, but it, it just leverages that. So if you want, you can also just back up to yeah, another disk for yeah, wh whatever vendor that, that you might like. So I think in terms of security, you have a lot of options just because you just control where those yeah. backups are being uh, being stored. Totally. Um, all right, so let's go back to the original agenda. The next question you know is, what is the history of this package? Where did it actually come from? Yeah, this this is actually one of the first the big packages that uh, that we've made. Oh yeah. And uh, I've I've uh, made no secret of this. Those packages they have always been made for like our our own projects and our own things. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only yeah, create open source if I know that, that we're going to use it. And this, this was like one of the first. So how uh, it, it ties a little bit with the history of Spassi itself. Okay. So before that we used Laravel, we, um, we created yeah, other frameworks like Zen framework or maybe no framework at all. And we made like smallish websites. Um, and we didn't need dedicated hosting for that. Uh, mm -hmm. We started out as a small agency and we just used shared hosting. 
And um, yeah, it's, it sounds really crappy. And that was the world those in, days. <laughs> yeah, in those days, it, yeah. it, 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 was, it felt pretty good because you didn't yeah. have to do anything about server management mm -hmm. in your uh, There was no Forge back do, then, okay? <laughs> there was no Forge indeed. Yeah. And something that uh, that you got with like uh, uh, with shared hosting is that your backups were made for you by your provider, so mm -hmm. you 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 shouldn't care about backups too much because you can just pick up the phone and ask your hosting provider, "I need that 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 file back." But of course, uh, yeah, we we start to use Laravel. We are very early adopters of. Forge as well. I, mm -hmm. I think if if Taylor would would look up our uh, user or team ID, I think it would have like one or maybe two digits. Uh, we were really <laughs> that sounds really fast. Sounds right for me too. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, of course, when you provision your service, we need to have backups of that as well. And I think one of the earliest um, hosting providers where Forge uh, integrated with was DigitalOcean, and they mm -hmm. had like weekly backups. But I felt that weekly backups wasn't good enough. I, if uh, one of our customers would have accidentally deleted something and I would say, yeah, we can only go back for a week, that wouldn't be enough. So then we yeah. started thinking, how can we backup our application? And there basically wasn't anything in this space. So we just, yeah, mm. made uh, our own solution for that. And um, yeah, that's, that's where the idea was born. And I think in the time, yeah, this was when we were still in the Laravel four days. Um, some some things like the cloud file system and like mm -hmm. the notification mm -hmm. system, it wasn't in Laravel. Yeah. So I, I in in the earlier versions of this package, where I think it's at version eight right now. I think in version one or two, you'll find that there is like an own notification system in there mm -hmm. and an own cloud um, file system wow. in there. And for me. Yeah, as Laravel grew, it was such fun to just throw away my own exactly, code and yeah. just fill it up <laughs> with with Laravel's native features. Yeah. I still remember like just throwing all the notification stuff and replace it with the the native notification function. And yeah, it was it it felt so good to do that. So it's also awesome. a little bit of my playground to uh, mm -hmm. to learn newish uh, Laravel features. Uh. Love that. That's really cool. I mean, it's it, that's one of my favorite parts of having open source packages, although just because of who I am, mine are more often open source software as a service than packages that I get to go play around and have fun with. So, and they're always the experimenting place. Oh, we're going to try, you know, whatever new framework, new tool, new pattern, because like, you know, it's in public. Other people can benefit from it. The, I use this thing on a regular basis or whatever. So totally get you there. And I love that. Um, yeah. So... I was going to go, that's not, let's just talk about what, what's the installation story. If I wanted, so I, let's say I've got a server right now yeah. and it's not backing up the database and users can upload their profile pictures. And I would really like for those profile pictures to be saved. I'd like the data to be saved. What, and it's on, it's a forge server. And let's say I'm going to use S3. What are the steps between where I am right now and actually getting this thing up and running? Well, you'll be happy to know that there aren't too many steps involved. So right. what, uh, uh, what you should do is install the package inside of your own Laravel application. And you can just do that with, uh, with composer. Mm -hmm. And then in the config file, you can just, uh, choose, yeah, which files do you want to, to backup and, um, uh, do you wish to, to backup the database? Then you have to configure a destination, which can be one of the disks of, uh, your, uh, uh, that you configured in, in config file system dot, dot, dot PHP. Mm -hmm. I think then, uh, you should schedule the, uh, the backup job. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can basically choose the, uh, frequency of, uh, of, of, of the backups. So if you just schedule the backups, uh, to run once a day, then you have daily backups. If you schedule it, uh, yeah, once an hour, then you get hourly backups. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that, really. Yeah. And there, then are, then are, then there are a couple of optional things that you can do, which I highly recommend uh, doing. But with with these steps that I've said, you're already backing up, so you already right. have backups somewhere. Yeah. But after a while, um, yeah, you're going to store a lot of. 
uh, yeah. backups, right? Uh, and you don't need every backup, maybe. So there's also a built-in functionality to uh, clean up the mm -hmm. the older backups. Um, and that, that comes out of the box. It's also highly configurable. But by default, we use something uh, that's called, I think, the grandfather father son scheme. Okay. And um, I think if you Google that on Wikipedia, you, you get like the, the formal definition. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I translate it to human, then, uh, then it's very simple. It's just keeping a number of backups for an amount of days. Mm -hmm. After that period, um, just keeping a single backup for for every week. Yeah. So the first eight days, you have a backup a day. For yep. the next four weeks after those eight weeks, you have a backup a week, then per month, then per year. Yeah. And you don't need to do anything uh, for that. You can just fill out how many backups do you want to keep daily, how many a mm -hmm. month. So that uh, that just, uh, just takes care of that. And there's also another functionality that I highly recommend setting up, and that is monitoring the, the health of the backups. Mm -hmm. Because if something goes wrong uh, backing up um, your application and you don't know about it, yeah, yeah, then yeah, then you're in in some in some misery and then, <laughs> then tears and and worse yeah. is, is 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 going to happen. So what's also built in the package is a way of monitoring uh, your backup. Like mm -hmm. when is the last time you took the backup? And if it's older than I think it's by default one day. Mm -hmm. then we will send you a notification. Yeah, notifications mm -hmm. are also built in. So we can notify you via Slack, uh, mail, whatever you want, basically, yeah. when there's a new backup being made uh, or when, uh, and this is the common use case, when something goes wrong, when there's like no yeah. backup uh, found for, for a day or something went wrong, taking the backup, we can immediately send a notification for that as well. Yeah. Um, so I highly recommend just turning on those features as well. Mm -hmm. And I think, but this is uh, like a little bit of an advanced thing, uh, already you can set up the monitoring, uh, part of the package, uh, in a separate Laravel application so that it's another application monitoring all of your other applications. Yeah. So if, if your server goes, original server goes down, then your backup server will still say, Hey, there's something wrong with your, no, I didn't know about that. That sounds sort of like a, um, like a cron check basically, but it's purely just yeah. for this, this particular webhook. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Is it a webhook? Just basically set it up so that each of your individual consumers sends a webhook out to the monitoring one. And then it, if it doesn't get that webhook, it gives an alert or is it a different kind of system there? It's a, it's a little bit different. It's okay. not, not, not necessarily via webhook. It's like the, the monitoring server is really going to, uh, go to your, uh, application and check, uh, where is it backupping to? I'm going to check mm, if it's, if got it, it has already, uh, already done that. Got yeah. it. Cool. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to pretend like I didn't know these other things, but that I actually didn't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so you kind of walk me through the workflow, what it's going to be like to set it up for the first time. So um, I think one thing that folks who aren't familiar with the file system might ask is, how is it getting access to these files? Is it getting access through a disk I have to set up? Or can I just get it any direction I, directory I want in the entire Laravel app or any directory in the entire server? Like, what does it look like to configure where those files are that I'm actually going to be you know, making a part of the backup? Um, I think it's in the, in the config file. It's, it's been a while since I've checked it myself. <laughs> actually, I think in the config file, you can just say, Hey, these directories, mm -hmm. uh, need to be, uh, need to be backed up and you got me there. I don't really know if you can <laughs> just back up another, uh, file system. It's been a while. Yeah. Again, I, I didn't actually know, what? know the answer to this one. So <laughs> I, I'm going, I'm going to just live check and I'm pretty sure it. it will be, uh, it will be in the config file, uh, and it seems like it's only the the, the local files that uh, that mm -hmm. this package can uh, um, can backup. So you can say, "Hey, I want to include these files," mm -hmm. and then you can say, "I want to exclude these ones." And by okay. default, we are going to include the entire base path, so that's your entire Laravel application. Mm -hmm. But what we're not going to backup, what we're going to exclude is the vendor directory and the node modules, because mm -hmm. probably you don't want to, uh, to backup that, uh, at all. 
And then you can do uh, specify stuff like, do you want to follow symlinks? You know, if you have mm -hmm. like a storage directory that isn't really in your application, but symlinked into the application, then we can follow the symlink and uh, back yep. up those files uh, as well. So yeah, this this yeah, I, I've already mentioned that this package is already at version eight, so there was already a lot of polishing yeah, uh, sure. going on here. Uh, so it's re it's really battle tested and. The features that uh, people have requested and that we needed, uh, that that makes sense. They, I think, at this point, they're all in the in in the package. Love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and that's a perfect transition to our next question, which is: Are there any lesser used features that are really cool, or really cool things you've seen people to do with this that are kind of like outside of the norm? Um. I don't think so, really. It's a little bit of a dry package, like it, it has does what this it does. aim, and, and <laughs> you just do what's what's on the box. Yeah, uh, exactly what's on the tin. Yeah. Um, maybe um, something worthwhile to know is that, like the the backing up part of um, of Laravel backup, is a is a package on its own. Uh, hmm. It's called the DB Dumper, okay. and if you want to hand roll some some of yeah, dumping databases, then you can use that package to do that. And in fact, we have another package that leverages that DB dumper as well. I don't okay. want to stray too far, but uh, I'll say like the basics of it. So we have another package, which is called DB snapshots. Okay. And it's basically used for, for testing where you can mm. just, um, if if you're developing, you can just uh, dump your uh, production, uh, your your testing or your local database. Use that in tests and have a mm. couple of different databases. So if you want to test a certain scenario, you can just dump and load up a certain version of uh, of your database. That's very cool. Um, and yeah, that that uh, that makes uh, yeah use of the DP dumper of uh, of Laravel backup itself. Love so it. I guess that's a little bit of a of a strange usage of some some functionality yeah, that's cool, in the in the in the Laravel backup package. Yeah, that's very cool. And we'll make sure we'll, we'll link up um, Laravel DB snapshots in the, the show notes as well if anybody's interested in that. So cool. Um, all right. So are there any other aspects of this package before we move on to the development roadmap? Is there any other aspects of using it or the history of it or anything else that you want to cover before we're done? Mm, 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 mm. I think, yeah, we, I think we got, we got it all. I'm going here through, uh, the documentation. I think we, we touched upon everything here. Uh, all right. So that's good. Yeah. All right. Well, our next one is, do you have a development roadmap you'd like to share? It kind of sounds like you're good, right? You said you're pretty happy with kind of feature complete ish. I think it's, it's kind of feature complete. Um, but what we, uh, do with this package and we do that uh, basically with, uh, uh, with every package is that we make sure that it uses like the latest Laravel and PHP, uh, versions. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's basically the only thing that's on like the, the big, <laughs> yeah, or on the small roadmap, uh, for this era, basically no features plan because yeah, we don't need any features and there yeah. aren't many things. Uh, proposed it. Yeah. Like I said, we're, we're already at version eight here. This package yeah. is six or seven years old at yeah. this point. So it's like a granddaddy of, <laughs> of packages. Uh, you know what it, you want it to do and it does it. So yeah, I love it. <laughs> there's, um, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if we need to delve in too much, but there is basically also another backup package that we have that isn't too well known because it's okay. it's like one of our our paid ones okay. which isn't um which we don't market um too too hard because we yeah we're still thinking about should we should we make this 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 a little bit bigger or not we're still thinking a little bit about it and it's called the backup server okay and what this thing will will do is a little bit different to what laravel backup uh does so what laravel backup server does um, you'll find it already on our, our website, even though we, we don't talk about it too much, but we use it ourselves, mm -hmm. is that you install the backup server on, uh, on one server, and that server will basically SSH into all of your other servers mm -hmm. and backup all the other applications to it. Mm -hmm. And it has something really incredible, uh, I think, inside of it, and that is uh, data duplication. So if we take 
a backup and after a while you take another backup and we see like the contents of the file is the same mm -hmm. they were only going to take space of one uh of one of those uh one of those files so it works a little bit like uh if you're familiar with that like mac os's time machine mm -hmm. uh yeah, it's just it storing like, the diff basically the delta it, it's 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 not it's 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 not really the diff uh, but right. it, it uses something like hard links. Like yeah. if it mm -hmm. sees like it's the same file, then it will still have like, uh, you have backup one, backup two. And in inside, if you open up the backups, it will say like, hey, here's a composer.json, here's a composer.json. But it will, those two files will actually point to the same disk space on, on your disk. And right. it will take care that if you delete one of them, then Got the it. other one will, will still, still work. So it's a little bit different. Yeah. Than diffing, and it's it's like yeah, the first time that I got that working, it was uh, was really cool. That's but the, the idea. reason why why we're not marketing it it yet is because it has no UI yet, so it's just the core functionality. And I think if we want to market this, it needs to be like the whole package mm -hmm. that that everybody can use it, even uh, even if you're not not a programmer related. So. Yeah, it's it's maybe a little bit far off, but that's a little bit on the the backup roadmap of, sure. of Spassy, just just growing that a uh, little bit more. But and the next question was, would you like to request any help support? So you kind of just gave me the one that you know the help and support is if that gets released, then consider buying that. You know, both because it may be yeah. helpful and also because that's a way to say thank you for the the free work that Spassy does in terms of the open source packages. So that's that's always a nice thing to do. I think. Uh, <laughs> I love yeah, it. I think if, if if some people want to contribute with uh, with Laravel backup with the with the free version, yeah. Whenever there's like a new PHP or Laravel version come out, uh, just to help with uh, with just yeah getting the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the source code even even better. Make sure that the tests run on the on the on the right things. You know what? I'm going to check out the issue tab and yeah, Matt, it's, it's really, uh, quite something. There are zero open issues and Love it. 760 closed one. There are no good. pull requests and 517 pull requests handled. So we are on top of things with this package. Love it. <laughs> well, congratulations. Cause I don't think any of my repos have zero issues. So you're winning <laughs> right now. I love it. Well, I think that's it for my questions for today. Is there anything else about this package you wanted to cover today before we're done? Um, I would people, I, I would recommend people to really use something like this. If you're mm -hmm. not uh, backing up, just, uh, just do it because one day your server will go down. It's, it's really a, wish you a question of when, not, yes, not if, not when and then yeah. you really, <laughs> you really want to have this. Um, I'll, I'll tell a very short story about this. Mm -hmm. And, and this is something that if you Google it, um, you, you'll come across quite, uh, quite some stories. Mm -hmm. Um, so one day this, this happened to, to our company as well, that, um, we were using digital ocean and they, they lost a server. So it was just gone from the one minute to, to the other. It's gone. Wow. It doesn't exist anymore. Bam. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, um, yeah, bash on digital ocean too much. This, if, if you Google around, you, you'll find similar stories, uh, for, for every, uh, kind of hosting, these kind mm -hmm. of things can, can happen. They don't happen mm -hmm. a lot, but if they happen to you, you really want to want to have yeah. backups, you know, and not yeah. just a local backup, like I'm just going to copy the directory. No, your whole server can, can be gone. Just vanish. Yeah. Um, just yeah, oh. and it, it could be like some sort of human accident. Maybe there there's like fire breaking out in in the data server and uh -huh. it destroys the original and the backups. It could happen. So just take yeah. backups. Uh, yeah, it's not free, but it's really close to free because you're basically just paying for S3 storage, and it's well recycled S3 storage. So it's not even that much. So. Good call. Yeah, I like that. Indeed. Well, Frank, thank indeed. you as always for all the packages you create, for the love and attention you give to them. And thanks for hanging out with me today to explain this package. I really appreciate you, man. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for inviting me, uh, Matt. <laughs> of course. And the rest of y'all, we'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.